Hey, sorry that the audio in this one sounds a little tinny. It had a horrible metallic background hum, and I had to scrub it, and we wound up with this. So, enjoy what we got, I guess. Sorry about that. Hey, everybody, it's Angel's Calamity, and uh, I'm back for more Dream Daddy. Woo, Dream Daddy. We're going to start part eight. And we're... This is Robert date one, so... Is that what we're on date with Robert? I don't remember what happened last year. Settle. Amanda and I play ball for a while longer than we cook dinner together. We manage not to almost burn down the house this time. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Tyler Tournament. Okay, this is where we were last. I remember this. Can I help you, Miss Vega? Okay. So, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Tyler Tournament. What you have in front of you is a molecularly disconstructive sweet potato with a brown sugar to make this with cream fresh, of course. This is literally a jar, baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Mm. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. After a few more episodes, Amanda goes to bed. I check my computer one last time, still nothing from Robert. But it says he read my message. Is he ignoring me? Eventually climb into bed to get some rest, but I just can't stop wondering why Robert won't message me back. I, he just might not be into us. It's okay. Don't worry too much about Robert. If we get him, we get him. Date complete. We went on a date? Maybe if you were hotter. Rank C? What? What? Did we go on a date? Now see, my dogs are loud and rude. Can you guys stop? Okay. I don't remember what happened. Um, because I forgot I had recorded another video and I hadn't edited it. I had part seven, which you guys probably have seen before you've seen this one. So you probably know what's going on before I do. And by the time this is up, I will probably know what's going on. But I didn't know I was on a date and I only got to see how awful. How awful. Life gives you lemons, parsley, onion, and eggs. Make a really nice omelet. I mean, I guess. While I'm doing my afternoon jump, war jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if I got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. Gotta get them coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I tightly knock. I tightly. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda. She yells to the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Yeah. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts. We're in Amanda's room. Very cute. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back later. <laughs> Father, please! I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds hmm. it. And... <clears throat> and... The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't... I got in! Yay, good job, Amanda Panda. Oh. I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie, that's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Oh. Wait, Dad... I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on this for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Mm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Thanks, Dad! Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Wherever you want. Wherever? Uh-oh. 
Man and I walk along the bayside terry into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Hell yeah. You could have chosen anywhere in Mabel Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a burrito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes and there are all these galleries nearby. And there's a discount if you bring your student ID and... Amanda, slow down. You're going to choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio once they're seniors? And we get all the professional photo editing software for free? It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA. I wish she wouldn't do between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's going to be. You take a survey online and they match with someone with a similar major and interest. I bet we're going to be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. I didn't know. Oh, wait. They, I think they already talked about being roommates. Hmm. I want to bone him then. He's, he's definitely on the list. But I don't even get me started on bad roommates. Hmm. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was the puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about a new foreign exchange student who read a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a ba dog's bark. <laughs> Carl Rule. <laughs> oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit, though? Oh, boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to hurt. But I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, you need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. Oh, she looks like she's been crying. Give her a hug. I pat her on the back. That worked. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Aw. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I just... I'm very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person. I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss yeah. her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> Love you, too, Pops. The adorableness. Adorable! Welcome. You've got dads. Back to dad look. Robert's not really been talking to us. So you know what? We're not going to bother him. Um, definitely not you. You're a solid maybe. You're a wavy maybe. Wavy maybe. Meh. You're a solid maybe too. Let's go with Craig. Message him. Um, dad. Oh wait, let's go see. Robert has one heart with us. Let's see who else put us. We haven't really been talking to anybody else. Damien, yeah. Matt. Yeah, none of us, none of them really like us yet. So let's, let's message Craig. Dad of three, business, how should we are? But you can be a business, you can be a Yeah, 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 we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fitness boy. I wonder what Craig's up to today. I navigate to Craig's dad book page and type out a message. Oh. Hey bro, or should I say neighbor? There it goes. Hey bro, or should I say neighbor? Let's catch up like old times. A couple moments pass before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, my man, let's definitely hang out soon. Might be a little different from our old weekend long benders, but it'll still be fun. I think for a moment, this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on the door. Yo, Amanda Panda! I open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by magazines and newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of art piece. What you working on? Huh. Just a college for cl uh, collage for class. 
We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. I take a closer look at her collage. That's a lot of dogs. Huh? It's mostly dogs, yeah. Do you need something? Craig invited us to a softball game. Wanna go? Uh... Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and you bought me all the gear and then you took me to the first game and then someone hit a ball towards me and I ran off the field? Off of the field crying? And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up? Yes. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a gigantic sentient softball. So does that mean you don't want to go? Amanda gets up and looks me dead in the eye, determined. Ugh. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. Let's do this. Amanda and I make sh a short drive out to the local softball field. For a kid's softball game, it's pretty packed. We clamber up to the bleachers and take our seats on the top row. I can't, don't see Craig anywhere. Dad. So when did the kids start crying and running off the field? You know that your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kids cry, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. <sighs> for nostalgia purposes, of course. Not because I'd take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. Lies. Lies and slander. Hmm. Definitely not that. The game starts and the kids run out to the field. I see Craig by the dugout with a clipboard. He has River strapped to his chest, as per usable usual, and there's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's a mascot. Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that it's a Maple Bay Flapjacks against the Pinewood Ocelots. Go Flapjacks? Oh, man. Choke up on the bat, Miranda! <laughs> yeah, Miranda, square up! How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that balls are relatively hard, despite their name. Hmm. But yelling is fun. <laughs> Give it a shot. It's carth cathartic. Ah, uh, keep your eye on Bob. What's important is that you're having fun. Who are you? What are you willing? Who are you willing? To it is Loki, the god of mischief, after all. Who are you willing to sacrifice? Um, what's important is that you're having fun. Go, friendship and kindness. <gasps> Dad, could you kick it up a notch? Maybe throw some spice on that papaya. Sure thing, honey. I believe in you, Miranda. We watch a couple innings of softball. They aren't ready for the major leagues yet, but Craig's trained his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Craig Stan, uh, Cake Stan Craig is good with children. Whoa. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and how no one has run off the field crying yet. Amanda, dear, you have to let it go. <gasps> let what go? I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up at the bat. They hit a fly ball out in the center field. The little girl tries to get under the ball, but it misses her glove and it hits her straight in the forehead. Oh no. Hey. See? It's a completely justifiable fear. The girl plops down on the grass and starts crying. Craig makes a beeline to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until checking her forehead and comforting comforting her. I can read until her parents arrive. We he carries her off the field as she sobs. Poor thing. Man, it's strange to think about how this was a guy who once backflipped off of the roof into a pool while shotgunning a beer. He's so responsible now. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit and we watch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. The ocelots seem to have given up by this point. I see one outfielder eating this fold of grass. Oh, okay. A batter on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and... Oh no, it's coming right for me! Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I close my eyes and brace for impact. Oh jeez. Why can't we just catch the ball? I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring in, in, at in. To see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in amazement. Hey. I caught the ball. You saved me. <laughs> I caught the ball, Dad. I caught the ball. You did it, Amanda. I faced my fears. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. Can I help you, Vega? That was Vega rubbing against the mic, by the way. Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. I'm proud of you, kiddo. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girls line up to shake hands. Hmm. Great job, everyone. We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig, who's taking talking with some of the parents. Craig! Great work, man. Oh. Thanks! We've been working hard all season. It's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of my girls. Which, speaking of what, uh, 
Which, have you met Briar and Hazel? Oh, my goodness. Chase? Chase? You know what's up. Briar and Hazel. Hello! Hey, killer playing out there. Hmm. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which one is you of you is the evil one? Hazel. Hazel just is not buying it. She just does not look happy. Yeah, it's me. Eh? Good looking out. Huh. Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think I'd be doing... I did... But I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take her all of her math tests. And I usually throw rocks and stuff when people get mad. I tell them I'm Briar. What? Oh. We will talk about this later. Hmm. Loki, bro, I just got a couple more things to clean up, then we can hang. Sounds good. Just then, one of the moms jump, jumps into the conversation. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our win, win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team out to get pizza. Oh, man. Oh, I don't know if I can. Nonsense. The girls won. What sort of celebration will we have without our fearless leader? She lays her hand on his shoulder and gives him goo-goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. Amanda and I share a look. Hmm. All right, all right. If it's, is it cool if my bro comes along? The mom looks slightly put out, but covers it up with a smile. Of course. Hmm. Where are we going? Thirsty's Pizza? Haha, <laughs> Thirsty's. They thirsty, alright. What? Oh. What? It's a real place. Ah, it's saving. An endless stream of girls clad in softball gear pile out of a minivan and onto a local pizza buffet, which is actually called Thirsty's Pizza. Amanda and I trail behind them with Craig. Alright. This is where we're leaving this episode. This has been Angel's Calamity playing Dream Daddy. You know you loved it. You know you loved it so much. Part 8. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!